Hello, friends and brothers. Thank you for joining us today. I want to introduce this book here. There is no Texas without Freemasonry, and that's a fact. It's a fact that it's a book, or a fact that there's no Texas without Freemasonry. <laughs> that's a, a fact, fact that Jack. More clear book, about your facts. <laughs> that's right. Right here, it's fact. But um, thank you for joining us, Chris. It's always a pleasure to have you. What inspired you to write this book? Well, you know, it's it's kind of a uh, I'm pretty proud of the cover that, that we that we made on there. Uh, it I came out it. so much better than I thought. The 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 uh, there is no Texas without Freemasonry is a is a a paper that I wrote probably twelve years ago. Um, I was I was asked to uh, be a keynote speaker for three lodges that were going to uh, have some type of celebration. I can't even remember what it was now. Uh, and I got a phone call, and and the brother asked me if I would speak. And I said, "What kind of a program would you like?" And he said, "Man, I really like something to, about uh, Freemasonry and and the history of Texas and how they." How they coincide, and I thought, "Wow, that's great! I'd love to do one of those." You know, it's an oddly and, specific. I love request. history, and huh? <laughs> that's a very <laughs> specific request. Exactly, you know, and uh, and uh, so so I said, "Yeah, I'll do it, no problem." And he says, "Great." He says, "Well, what do you think the title will be?" And I said, "Wait a minute! You just now asked me to do this, and now you want a title?" He goes, "Well, I want to advertise it." <laughs> I said, Golly! And I and I I sat there and I stammered a couple times, and I just. It just popped into my head. I said, there is no Texas without Freemasonry. And he said, that's a great title and hung up. And there I was with the phone, <laughs> here, you know, thinking, oh, my gosh, now I got to write a paper to fit that title. And uh, and it came out great. Uh, I'm very proud of it. And it, and it's uh, but it's it's not the whole book. It's it's just the uh, the first chapter of the book. And the rest of the chapters are uh, are papers uh, uh, that I've written over the years. Uh, and and way back there in the back are some uh, some uh, uh, po poetry that I've written, uh, uh, several poems that I've written, and I, I'm pretty proud of it. It was it was it was nice, and I would have never done it if if it hadn't have been for John Deacon. Uh, uh, but I've been really fortunate to be in in situations uh, at, in Masonic situations in this fraternity over the last twenty five plus years that. Uh, and and the and the ability to to uh, I keep telling everybody I'm not I'm not a real writer you know I just the movie plays in my head and I just keep typing yeah you're a thoughts, storyteller you know? and yeah, so, you're a natural storyteller so that's how the stories come out and and uh, uh, there's just there's just so many neat I, I'm I'm so grateful to have been in so many interesting and and. Uh, and uh fabulous situations and and having the ability to 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 write about them and uh uh that's 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 basically what what the book's all about uh past grandmaster mike gower made made the statement at a, a gathering that i spoke at and he's he he stood up and he said let me tell you how you got to read these books he says you read john deacon and you find a place to stop because you're not going to want to stop but he says when you read there is no texas without freemasonry you just read, read one, read one, you know, one article at a time, and and uh, and uh, try to digest it and stuff. And I, I was, uh, again, pretty grateful for those words because that's, you know, that's 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 pretty nice. I mean, people yeah. people saying nice things about something you've done is is probably one of the neatest things to have happen. But uh, it's a great little book. Uh, uh, and, and and the good news is I didn't have to sit down at a typewriter or at a at a laptop for for six months and 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 write it. <laughs> it, it all it's not that to little put it together, right? right. Yeah, it's, it's not it's, a lot it's thicker, not that it's little. a lot thicker than I thought. Well, I'll be sure to put what? a link in the description of this video with a with a link to the the book itself for anyone that, that's listening and wants to grab a copy. One of the one of the reasons for this for this interview. Uh, aside from talking about the reunion, which we talked about in the previous episode, and aside from talking about there's no Texas without Freemasonry, a uh, book that Brother Williams wrote, Brother Williams is also the first speaker at the Building a Better Brotherhood Summit at September 16th in Corpus Christi, 
he will be our first speaker. And so it, you won't need coffee because you're going to hear Chris Williams and it's going to pump you up, get you excited. You're going to be full of adrenaline and ready to take on the day. Just listening to the, the motivation uh, that just that just comes out of Chris Williams whenever he talks. So just to be clear, so everyone understands officially, Chris Williams is the first speaker we are unveiling. No pressure. <laughs> he, will, he will be the first speaker at the summit. And yes. he is just just one of a lineup that will be remembered forever as the Texas dream team of speakers. Yeah, it's it's an amazing lineup. It really is. I'm yeah. I'm so excited. I can't wait to to announce the others. Well, Dennis, do you have anything you'd but, like to, to add to this or I would like to add to this because it, this is our first real talk about the summit with um with one of our with one of our speakers and mm -hmm. and um this the summit is is built around the idea of inspirational leadership so it's it's something that really needs to be said because and the reason the whole reason chris is starting us off is because this you know he has already done the work for some of the most inspirational leaders that we know we wouldn't we wouldn't be around here we wouldn't be settled here if if it wasn't for those leaders and um and just the true grit and fire that they have and or had and and so if we plan on making a difference in our communities in our families in our freemasonry mm -hmm. we have to we have to light that fire within ourselves so that's what this summit is about is trying to light us light a fire under us and, and get us all excited I'm and glad i you know said that because it's worth pointing out that this topic that we're talking about about basically texas being shaped by freemasons is exactly in line with what you and I have been talking about. How how important it is for us as Masons to step up in our communities, in our state, in our counties, uh, in our families, in our churches, or whatever organizations we're members of, to step up and be that example, be the leaders that we know that that frankly Freemasonry enables us to be, right through the lessons. Through, yes. through the teachings, through the growth we undergo as we progress through the line, that if you just if it just if it all stays in the lodge, uh, I mean you still have a full happy life, right? But you're depriving your community of excellent leadership. Well, well, so that's where well, so well, and and that's where we have to go back to that internal versus external thing, right? Because if you really take it in then it's our responsibility to take it outside. It's our responsibility to, to be those people for the people that, that we serve. And, and that's what this is as well. It's, it's, it's servant leadership because every one of these people sacrificed to do what they did for our state and for our country. And, you know, when's the last time you really sacrificed, you know? So Burger King ran out of tomatoes, so I didn't get tomatoes on my hamburger. Damn it, I sacrificed. Yeah. But that's the reality, right? So that's that's kind of where we're at in today's world. We we instead of us going out and affecting the world, the world is is affecting us. And and it's time to light that fire and change that around. Well, we say we we take good men and make them better, right? But but no one ever really asks why why do we want to become better men? Why do we want to improve ourselves? And sure, I mean, it could help you on a personal level, but th there gets a point like you, I've never seen anyone that has developed at a personal level who has not at some point uh, branched out and got involved with other, with other things. I think it's, I think it's, frankly, it's impossible to, to grow as a man and, and not have people start reaching out to you because you become reliable, you're dependable. You're intelligent. You have experience with things like that. Uh, you're so competent. You're competent. Which... You've gone through those rites of passages that that have built you up to be able to handle those those circumstances. Yeah, and these are things that are not as common as we take them for granted to be, and and these are traits that are growing less common, uh, so it would seem over time. So the 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 process of becoming a better man gives us indispensable skill sets to make the world a better place 
yes. creates all kinds of uh, indispensable opportunities to to do all yes. this. Yes. Yes. I'm going to make a prediction that when you go to the summit, you're going to see the majority of the leaders around our state there. I think I think that you're going to see the the majority of the people that show up are going to be the leaders in our state because we're always trying to sharpen our our blades, right? We're always trying to sharpen ourselves to to be better and at least leaders do. So I, I truly have a feeling that, that we're going to see some of the, we're going to be able to sit and visit with some of the, the sharpest minds in Freemasonry, in Texas Freemasonry, as well as and, and in other states. states. Yeah, and I'll be there too. Yeah, are um, we going to get to see a, a special deal? So after the education portion, we'll have a, a festive board. And after that, we will make our way to the USS Lexington for the annual Master Mason's degree, which I was at last year and it was phenomenal. And if you are a Texas Mason and you, if, especially if you have not been there before, it, it should be on every Texas Mason's bucket list to at least see it. Yes. Once. Usually this coincides with officer leadership training. This will not this year. And so if you are coming down for the for the Lexington, you might as well come to the summit. And if you're coming to the summit, you might as well go to the Lexington. Yes. And after after that, uh, we're actually going to be introducing the Knights of Mecca uh, who are coming down again to do it in full uniform or not uniform, but in full costume and, and really show you what the master's degree was supposed to look like. Um, not only that, but we're going to introduce them during the festive board so that we can leave immediately after the degree and head over to the hotel and sit on the beach with a fire and have our intoxicating liquors and talk Freemasonry the rest of the night. Yeah. Cause last time we did it's, it, we did, uh, I'm excited. We did, um, what was it? What's it? The, the introductions after the degree and it was lengthy. It was lengthy. Yes. Everything, yes. everything done within the context of a tiled lodge takes 10 times longer than it would just outside the lodge. So that's why we're going to do the introductions <laughs> at the festive board. Hey, here they are. Thanks for coming, guys. Those guys work hard mm -hmm. to be the as good as they are and to go around all around the state. Anytime somebody needs a good master's degree, they'll go. You just got to give them time and 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 give open them a date. The schedule is open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're constantly moving. <laughs> uh, Brother Williams, did you have anything you wanted to add? For I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for having me on here. Uh, it, it's been fun. You guys do a great job, and 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 it's 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 always neat to 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 interact with you guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking yeah. forward to the uh, the summit. I I'm think looking that forward to, to hanging out with you again. Thing. Me too. Me I think too. this is this is probably the third time you've been on here now, isn't it? It is. I think you have the record, yeah. but I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be fantastic, and there will be uh, other opportunities in all likelihood to to attend. Oh yeah, but the first one. It's going to be the one that they will talk about. They will sing about in songs for generations. It is going to be yes. legendary. So be there if you can. Be there if you can. Yes. It'll, if, it'll... You, if you don't go, you'll definitely hear about it. Yes. 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 You will hear about it for sure. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Chris, for, for coming on. Uh, thank always you, appreciate definitely. our conversations together. Uh, brother, brother White, Brother Rockenberg. Uh, for those that, that don't know uh, what we did this time is as a as a part for our members, if they chose to, uh, we allowed them to uh, sit on the sideline for the invitation for this, uh, for not for the invitation, for this uh, um, interview and uh, this were, unveiling, this unveiling. <laughs> and uh, we had a few uh, short cool. Q&A's that I'll, I don't know if I'm going to leave in for the for the for the mainstream or not, but um yeah, it's just another perk of being a member, and I definitely appreciate y'all taking the time. I mean, you've been here an hour and a half almost listening, and so I uh, appreciate your devotion and dedication to the fraternity and to Masonic Pyramid.